I received a question about Romans 8, 26 through 27. And the question is about since the Holy Spirit makes intercession for us, will all of our prayers get answered? So let's read Romans 8, 26 through 27. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. One of the key things, I believe, is we know not what we should pray for as we ought. It says in verse 26, Sometimes the things we pray, we're praying about or we're praying for isn't actually good for us. And God can see the end from the beginning. And God knows the motive of why we're praying for it. So He knows what's going to happen if our prayer is answered. He knows what's going to happen if it isn't answered. When the Spirit makes intercession for us, He has all of our future in mind and the influence that it's going to have on others in mind. What he wants for us is in mind. And what he wants for us may not necessarily be what we are asking for. I believe another key phrase is according to the will of God. While we can go against the will of God and not do God's plan for our life, I don't believe God's just going to deliberately always go against what go against his will to give us what we're praying for. Although I do believe sometimes he does that. Like if you consistently pray for something you know he's just going to give that to you maybe to teach you a lesson or something I, I believe the lord will answer the prayers of the saint according to the will of god and the will of god is what's best for you and god's got it worked out to where no matter what you do or or what happens it's not going to change his plan or the bible you know nothing we do can change what God's got written out. Nothing. And God, you know, you can go against the will of God and do things that God doesn't want you to do. It's not the will of God for you to go out and live wickedly. But for the most part, when you're praying and you pray for something that's not according to the will of God, I don't believe God's just going to go against what He wants for you and give you that. The will of God is... What's best for you? So even if your prayer doesn't get answered, it's still going to be in your favor because the will of God is what's best for you. 1 John five fourteen and 15, and this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He heareth us. And if we know that He hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of Him. So if we ask anything according to His will, you know, I believe it's got to be according to His will. For example, if you're praying for a godly wife and you ask the Lord to send you a godly wife, I believe that's according to His will because He doesn't want you to marry a lost person. That's a good prayer. But He may not send her right away. And this also doesn't mean you sit around and wait without looking like He's just going to drop her in your lap. Even though His will would be for you to have a godly wife, you can go against that, get impatient, and, and marry an ungodly wife. While his will would have been for you to wait until you found a godly wife. So I'm not saying that you're, the will of God is just going to happen for you. Because you can go against it and do something that he does not want you to do. So, But at, on, at the same time, I don't believe just because you're praying for a wife, he's just going to drop one right at your door right then. So I mean... The thing of you, you're going to have to wait sometimes is true for for a saint. You're going to have to wait. You're going to have to be patient. Uh, another example is maybe an evangelist prays for a giant tour bus to travel around to churches to preach the gospel. God's not obligated to do that. Maybe God wants him to have that giant tour bus or whatever it is. Maybe, But on the other hand, maybe he wants him to drive a beat-up van around everywhere and have trouble with his transportation all the time to make him better, to make him have better character or something. That may be according to the will of God. While we can go against God's will, I'm not saying we can't, 
I'm also not saying, I'm, I just don't believe the Lord is just going to drop everything in our lap that we pray for when he knows it's not best for us. I'm glad, and I'm glad that he doesn't do that. I'm sure there's been many things I've prayed for that I thought, well, that's a good thing to pray for. But actually, when the Lord looked into the future, sees into the future, sees how it's going to affect me and the people around me, maybe he says, well, it's not good for that, for him to have that in his life. See, even certain things in our life that cause us trouble, we can pray to get rid of those things, but maybe the Lord actually wants us to keep it. Like, in my mind, if I've got something bad going on in my life and I pray to get rid of it, I think, well, that's a good thing to get rid of it. But is it really a good thing? Maybe the Lord wants us to keep it because to Him it's a good thing, because it makes us better or more humble. For example, in 2 Corinthians 12, 8 through 10, For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And He said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Through certain weaknesses, you're made better, because then you rely on the Lord for your strength and not on your own. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. So the weaker you get, the more down and out you get, you know, maybe uh, through your health or just somebody being a thorn in the flesh to you. The weaker they make you, the closer you get to God because you realize you can't go in your own strength. Many times you're praying to get rid of something and it's God's will for you to keep it because it's going to make you better. And it's up to God what He, you know, He's going to let happen. I mean, while we can go against the will of God, it's still God that allows or doesn't allow it to happen. Whatever Paul's thorn was, the Lord had it to keep him humble. Many times we have something in our life that keeps us close to God, and I wonder if we should really pray to get rid of it, even though it's killing us, but should we really pray to get rid of it if it's actually making us better, and if that's the thing that's actually keeping you close to God? Maybe the Lord would have gotten rid of Paul's thorn had he kept praying about it, but he had to keep it, even though he besought him the Lord thrice about it. In the Old Testament, King Hezekiah was sick and close to death and he prayed about it. And in his case, God added 15 years to his life. You see, I can't really look at a person and tell them, well, God's going to answer that prayer and that's your, his will for your life. It, you know, it's like if somebody's praying to get rid of a certain sickness or disease, I can't just say, well, God's going to get rid of that disease. Maybe he wants them to keep it. On the other hand, I can't uh, tell them that he's not going to get rid of it. Because I don't know the end from the beginning, but God does. So Hezek uh, King Hezekiah, he got 15 extra years at it. However, during that 15 years, he had a son named Manasseh, Manasseh, who turned out to be one of the most wicked kings in history. And God saw that ahead of time and still allowed it to happen. Maybe it would have been better off for Hezekiah and Israel. If Hezekiah had died 15 years earlier, but God gave him what he wanted still. So still, sometimes I believe God will just give you what you're praying for. And then by giving what you pray for, what you're praying for, it'll be even worse than it was. But then it turns out making you better because you have to go through something hard. Going through hard things makes you better. Tribulation worketh patience. If you're going to pray for patience... Tribulation worketh patience. God may put you through some tribulation to get that patience. Sometimes we can pray about a soul being saved. And it's, of course, the Lord's will that all be saved. However, not all people is going to get saved. And just because we pray for somebody to get saved, God's not going to override their free will to just to answer your prayer that you prayed according to His will. I mean, it's according to his will that I'll be saved. But God's not going to take your prayer and override the free will of someone else and make them get saved. So Paul prayed for many people, especially the Jews, that they might get saved. And it's the Lord's will that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. But still, most Jews are blinded to the truth. 
those people that Paul had a burden for, they didn't get saved, even though he prayed that they would. It says in Romans 9, 1 through 3, I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost, that I have great, con great heaviness and continual saw in my heart. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh. So you see, Paul was praying for him, the, praying as hard as he could, great heaviness, continual sorrow in his heart. But God didn't override the free will of all those people he was praying for just to answer his prayer, even though his prayer was according to the will of God, you see. So I don't believe that Romans eight twenty six through 27 means that God's going to answer any prayer a saint asks. I, I mean, we're not going to get all our prayers answered. There's so many things that it's going to have to be taken into account. And I can't really wrap my head around it because I, I just feel like it's, all that stuff's up to God. And I don't really know what, what prayers he's going to answer and what prayers he's not going to answer. So there are things that have to be taken into consideration when it comes to getting prayers answered. Is it in the Lord's will? Does it override the will of someone else? Which he's not going to do that. Like he's not going to override the free will of a lost person because you pray that they would get saved. There are some prayers that will also be answered automatically. For example, a confession of sin will put you automatically back in fellowship with God. I mean, if you're backslidden and right now you say, God, I'm, I'm sorry for my sin. I want to be back in fellowship with you. That is answered automatically, without a doubt. 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Also, the first prayer you ever prayed, Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. A prayer doesn't save you. But as a general rule, most people pray, when they get saved, and the Lord saved you the moment you believed in your heart to salvation. And out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth spoke, and you said, Lord, save me. Or you said something along those lines, just like Peter did when he was going under. So that's a prayer that was answered automatically. The moment you prayed that, you believed in your heart to salvation. And that was a prayer that was answered automatically, even though it's not the prayer that saves. Don't, don't twist my words. And there are also cases when where your prayers can be hindered in certain cases the bible talks about just one example is you know if if uh, you and your wife's not getting along if you're not giving honor unto the wife in first peter 3 7 likewise you husbands dwell with them according to knowledge giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered so there's things that can hinder your prayers from being answered as a new testament christian Taking all these things into consideration, there are going to be cases where your prayers don't get answered. But this should never stop you from asking for things because God wants you to ask for things. God wants you to, to ask Him. James 4, 3, Ye ask and receive not because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lusts. God wants you to pray frequently. As Paul said, 1 Thessalonians five seventeen, Pray without ceasing. Thank God in your prayers. 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. When I pray, I, each time I start out confessing a, a sin that I've probably done or a sin of ignorance. I say, forgive me for sins of ignorance I've done that I don't even realize I even did. And then, you know, you want to give thanks. And then you want to give praise. And then you want to pray for somebody else. And then... I ask for something, mostly something spiritual, not for material things. I don't, I don't ever really recall asking for something a material thing ever. I just, not that I'm saying you can. It's just I just don't really do that. But you know, the things I'm asking for is wisdom, knowledge, understanding, things like that. That's according to the will of God because Solomon prayed for that. We know Solomon prayed for that. God liked it, and I want to follow that same pattern. But don't ever let the fact that a prayer went unanswered cause you to quit praying. What you're praying for could be answered and you don't even know it, or it could be answered after you die, or things might have even been worse if you didn't pray the prayer. 
So I do not believe that all the prayers you pray will get answered. I believe there's things that are taken into consideration that goes way beyond my comprehension. So, but I hope that th this has helped the person that asked the question, although I feel like I did a horrible job answering the question. But I just, I feel like certain things about prayer and how God answers prayer is kind of just beyond my comprehension at this time. Maybe I'll learn more and can answer the question better in the future, but at this time, this was just the best I could do. So, but I hope that helped the person, and don't give up praying.